Warning. Although my content is usually family-friendly, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such, will contain blood, language, suggestive themes, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. So it actually occurred to me, like, just now, in, uh, Phoenix, in the first Phoenix Wright game, we, like, meet and interact with Maya and Mia Fey, but there's actually, I forgot we didn't interact with the third Fey sister at all throughout this game. Oh, yeah, there is a third Fey sister. Yeah, Tina. Not Tina. Tina, Tina Fey! <laughs> oh, I would totally... Okay, if her name was Tina Fey, I'd actually be really happy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Anyway, hey guys, Color Forty and Marty are back for more Rise from the Ashes, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney bonus case, case 5, blah 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 blah. Well, we're gonna finish up the investigation period today. We're just hanging out in an underground parking lot. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> this is where all the cool so kids hang out. security at the top. Yeah. Let's, so let's, let's, high cross key let's see what Edgeworth is up to. <laughs> yes. He's having tea. Spills the tea. February 24th, High Prosecutor's he Office, room off 1202. <laughs> That's not his switchblade knife. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But he had blood on the ground or whatever. Like. Mr. Edgeworth isn't here. Maybe he's being questioned by an inquiry committee? Plot twist, everyone's dead. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> he took a real beating in court today. Yeah, with Lana admitting to the false t uh, falsifying evidence two years ago? I guess we'll just have to come back later. Oh, I thought we were going to talk to him. Yeah, all everyone's right. You know what? Dead. That's fine. Let's go back to criminal affairs. Yeah, let's look and at people. Yeah. Wait, we talked to we already talked to her earlier, though. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, what do, you, I, what do you mean I can't go to criminal affairs for my office? That's bogus! I can do that literally every other case. <laughs> All right. February 24th, Police Department, Criminal Affairs. This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the uh, conference room. Uh... Thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us! <laughs> With the chief prosecutor saying that she did, and saying what she did, and the decision about what to do about Mr. Well, Edgeworth. that's not Gant. And not to mention our statement to the media in tomorrow's trial. There is more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. With all the in-laws. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Just head across the hall to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Wait, for real? Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right! You <laughs> can't go in there! It's off limits! <laughs> now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to Chief's office. The guy's like, wait, stop! <laughs> I didn't tell you the anything! The Chief's office. Oh boy. Someone's gonna have a night. Oh, yeah! Well, but, well, Gant's- Is there an organ in there? Yes, that's an organ. Makes sense because Gant's main theme is, like, an organ piece, so. Okay, this is literally like in Zelda where Ganondorf, like, is, like, <laughs> playing the organ and he's like- Oh yeah, like, they're my parallels. music, Princess Zelda. <laughs> okay, Ganondorf is a classy villain. He he's can play the organ. I love villain. that. No, but I'm saying I'm, I'm getting the same yep. vibes. February 24th, Police Department Chief's Office. See? Organ. I forgot. Whoa, where am I? Is it like Haunted Mansion where the organ plays itself? <laughs> <laughs> In the chief's office, silly. At least, that's what it said on the door. I, I would like to think that Gant spends most of his time just playing In this the theme on his organ so everyone can it's like, hear it. like, um, chief, are you ready to actually solve anything? He's like, I want to play the organ! <laughs> Check out that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten! That's very random. They used to call me Little Miss Buck. It's Bach. You gotta Bach. get. You got to get the ugh because it's German. I thought I was a genius until something. Until they started teaching me notes. <laughs> I never could remember where C was. Hey Emma, I get you. It took me forever to remember where C was on yep. the piano. Mm hmm. Hi. Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. So, Mr. Wright, have you been swimming lately? Uh. No, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full, too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. I don't remember okay, provocative wait, statement, so he's but... just hanging out in the office and they're like, Oh, hey, look, a pipe or a da, 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 oh, <laughs> He's like, oh, now I noticed you. He's, he's hard of hearing. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence. Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies! 
See that big picture on the wall over there? Oh! Let's take a good long look at it. Who's the dude in the that looks like C-3PO? Um, that's a statue of armor, Marty. Never mind. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought it was C-3PO. Oh, did you know? That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me, and C-3PO. <laughs> <laughs> we went to the Star Wars convention together. It was a jolly time. And then we she went does, swimming. She does look like she belongs in Star Wars, to be honest. With, the, with her, like, shoulder pads. Grand Moff Lana. <laughs> So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Near Marshall. Near Marshall. Near Mar- <laughs> he was a near Marshall, don't you know, Bean? <laughs> we took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it, though. I think it must be C-3PO. Gant team picture added to the car. <laughs> That's the worst sports team ever, the Gant. Gant team picture! <laughs> they, they were the swimming team. <laughs> Wait. Why is C-3PO and, um, Lana wearing the same scarf? Uh, coincidence, I'm pretty uh-huh. sure. Hello? Anyway, oh. I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, but this office... It was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. What, like, criminal says? All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Great. Now hurry up and get out! I have a meeting to attend. The happily terrifying. Yeah. Looks like we aren't welcome. You're not welcome here! <laughs> Seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Gant denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. I mean, I don't want someone snooping around my room. <laughs> That's true. If I'm like, get out of here, man, I need to go school. They might find my cell collection! <laughs> yeah, no kidding. They might find weird things that I have in my room. You mean like a clue? There's gotta be a way we can get inside the Chief's office. We will break in through the window! Karate with Samurai Slap and a with Samurai, samurai Chop! <laughs> February 24th, Police Department we Colonel Affairs. We just enlist Maya. We're like, Maya, we need you to channel spirit. <laughs> Can you channel Schwarzenegger? No! <laughs> hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe! Were you in a meeting? I was, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long in the meeting? Actually, I had to serve everyone coffee. Oh. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Hey, say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battle's between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. Do, 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 no. I, I wanted to talk to him. Oh. Edgeworth's crisis. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. He's still on the prosecutor. Lana though. Sky's the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible yeah. for the evidence he presents in court. Not only that... But as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. Those who don't like him haven't been able to do anything because of his... amazing talent as a prosecutor. But now with this... Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only had that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey Dick, keep up the good work! Yes sir! Let's go out for lunch again sometime! My treat! Yes sir! You gotta take me back to that joint, okay? Sometime, sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir. Seems you don't have any problem with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Crack? Would Edgeworth have, like, the weird, like, scream? He's poorly just like, ah! <laughs> Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, kind of buddies. did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was of during his final attack. His final attack? You mean, when he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. That girl 
it was me. Me. Seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all! Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Great job, Gumshoe. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? Let's look. His powers of recollection never fail to impress. <laughs> Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Maybe. Or we could just look at it ourselves, because apparently he sucks at that. <laughs> Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just a run-of-the-mill businessman. I don't think he was, if he was a, a serial A businessman? What made him take to serial killing? One day on his ride home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal! An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident, then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. A kid walked by then, just then, so he killed him too. Oh my gosh! Then when he was burying the bodies, a jogger came up upon the scene and he was killed as well! Finally, he turned himself in. Seems he was a pretty careless animal. I wonder if who he hit, like, made it worse. Like, it was like, oh, he hit this important person, or he hit this person that's related to this. Yeah, it, like, it's Gant, Like, what if Gant had a daughter and then Gant's like... Oh, he's going... Uh, like, I don't know. I, maybe. Otherwise... More like if Gant had a granddaughter. He's in yeah. his 60s. I actually um. do know someone who hit someone with a car, and it's dreadful. Actually, that, yeah. was, that was someone at um, one of my schools. Like, oh. like an adult. Oh, She wow. felt terrible, of course. Oh, yeah. And that, of course, makes you go crazy. But yep. thankfully, she's fine. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone, too, but fortunately he was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness. He must mean Emma. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's actually look at the evidence. Or the switchblade knife. Um, about this... Hey! Don't tell me that's... It has a tag attached to it, with the label XL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. And it was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it! Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was! Woohoo! When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me! Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again! <laughs> He's a huffin' and puffin'. Yeah, he is. This knife, it was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at, and it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at this knife, you'll see it's broken! You don't have to take a good look at it to notice that. Yeah, well anyway, take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet! Down to the last fiber. That's pretty... conclusive. Neil's autopsy report added to the court record. Oh, thanks. How- why was Gumshoe doing with a, like, two-year-old autopsy report He's on like, it? He's like, hey guys, here you go! <laughs> I collect them, it's my hobby! <laughs> well, there you have it in a nutshell. Hang on, let's take a look at that autopsy report. Yeah, go for it. Stabbed in the back, back died kind of from a punctured punch. heart in one. Ugh. Um, Heart. but he was stabbed in the front. Okay, so, single stab wound piercing the heart and the one. Assessment died from blood loss in under 10 minutes. Weapon found in wound was missing the tip between 7 and 7.30. That would be No, like stabbed in the back. It says stabbed in the back, but the photo, photographic memory that she had was stabbed in the front. No, it was, he was on his... He was on his knees. He was lying face down on his chest and the stomach was in a pretty front of his back. Okay. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more, Fane? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gant. Apparently. <laughs> it's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. 
The chief's out now, and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. <gasps> what? <laughs> really? Okay, that would be such a big problem if that's the case. <laughs> hey, Chief, just fine. You just private the bathroom. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's like the least of your problems. I'm saying like someone could come and play your organ, could find whatever the heck you need you know, have in there. Yeah, but if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with a breach of trust. Breach of trust? Wait, are we gonna play as Detective Gumshoe? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. That data was deleted the day that he died. Dang it. Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. Not necessarily true. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. A steak! Let's get him a steak! Alright, let's get him a steak! <laughs> Is that what we actually need to do? <laughs> well, we might as well try. Let's go back to the underground park. Yo, Lana, are you down here? You or mean not Lana. Angel Star? Angel Star? No! no! That was Maybe my Edgeworth one has shot. some steak. Yeah, Edgeworth. Yo, bro. <laughs> Yo, go, bro. February 24th, back in the high, the high Prodicutor's office. <laughs> I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is! It looks like he's writing something. Huh? What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. <laughs> I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Hedgeworth. I'm rooting for you. Mr. Hedgeworth? Mr. Hedgeworth! <laughs> That's the gardener. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny if he had a brother named Hedgeworth. <laughs> That's Edgeworth for you. I mean, it's his last name, so it oh, wouldn't that's be true. Hedgeworth. <laughs> always, Hedgeworth, Hedgeworth. <laughs> always trying to hide his real feelings. So what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Wow, Edgeworth. Come on. This is why you're probably never gonna get married. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, that the evidence was falsified? The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error, my responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why? Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. So how are you feeling for tomorrow? <laughs> are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. First last year's trial, now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial! Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. That's true. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? That list of evidence, it seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists. That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but at the time there was only one thing on my mind. I'd use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture? Something seems strange about it. Edgeworth wasn't there. <laughs> Edgeworth didn't get invited to the Chief's private swimming party. <laughs> at, that, at the that Star Wars convention. Sense. Yeah, at the Star Wars convention. <laughs> Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered? You were participating in a ceremony over the, at the station, right? I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. That's not true. There are people who do that at Tony's. <laughs> They're like, oh, I didn't show up, but I still get my trophy. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah! Chief can't ask you to hold on to that, didn't he? I'm telling you! 
He's planning all of this! <laughs> yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to? That's right. It does seem a bit suspicious. That's why I'm like, hmm... I'm not saying he's necessarily the one. <laughs> this is the Gantt team picture! <laughs> this picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gantt's office. Why Plus, is there a trophy behind it? That's the vase. Oh. The vase! Yeah. Oh. Why is that there? Well, that was in the crime scene of the SL9 incident, and the vase was evidence in the SL9 incident, and then someone broke it. <laughs> Prosecutor oh. Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there is something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. I remember now. Remember what? That was the official Prosecutors trophy used until that time. There's a story behind it. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Alright. Fill me. Tell me more! Tell, tell me more! more. Did, did you, you get, get very, very far? far? Tell me more! Tell me more! Like, did you hurt your sports car? Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was a bit of a stretch. Grease yeah, is a terrible <laughs> show. I'm sorry. Yeah. Actually, I'm not sorry. It's a terrible <laughs> show, and I stand by that proudly. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. Oh boy, in Japan, California. <laughs> in Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? No, but that makes Me? sense, because it's oh, uh, Sure, everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it, though, for Emma's sake? Very well. <laughs> Long ago in the kingdom of Chu, is... there was an arms merchant. This has to be important at some point. <laughs> <laughs> One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Objection. Those crimes contradict each other! <laughs> Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard the story before, right? Anyway, as you mentioned, the very descriptions of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless. And thus, the Chinese word for contradiction was born. I love how it's playing the cornered music. <laughs> oh, I see! So, the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow! Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth! I learned something new today! So did I, I guess. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? Because you suck. You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. Keen of Prosecutor's he's... Trophy updated in the court record. Okay. He, m he must be like a weird symbol thing where he's like, we can't have contradictions, we're prosecutors, so therefore we're just going to have the shield that can repel everything. <laughs> uh, Alright. <laughs> That's a decent idea. Come on, I oh, want lunch. Steak, like lunch, this. steak, lunch, steak, lunch! February 24th, Prosecutor's Office, underground parking lot. Excuse me. Yay, I was right! Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Yes, that sounds delicious. Miss Star, I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. Okay, to be fair, just looking at the calves drinking from the udders it may makes yeah. you think it's probably safe to drink. What's even weirder is people who are like, Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll take this, like, fish, um, pickle it in poison, and okay. then, like, rinse it out with Audio water. Audio will never and get That's with fisk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from the case was due for transferal. This can't all be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know, that little scene I happened to witness? The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. 
No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. <laughs> Clearly she's been to Arby's. Oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't gone to Arby's in forever. Now it's I think delicious. about it. It also it's like a ton of food, which is great. Miss Star's hatred towards Lana. I wonder, do other parts of the world have Arby's, or is that like just like America? <laughs> I, I never thought about it. I wonder. You lemmings formers that are in Europe, do you have <laughs> Arby's near you? It's basically like a roast beef sandwich place. Yeah, kind of like that. Sure. I don't know. It all I, dates I haven't back been in a while. Two years ago. Arby's. <laughs> Arby's. <laughs> Arby's. <laughs> Joe Dark. That's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Oh, hold on. Wait. Half a year? So Does that mean like okay, he's killing on. people every day? Well, no, because he killed all those people in one day. So either it took him half a year before he's like, I, I have to... Could, like turn myself in, or it or took half a year for them to, to even find it, or it took half a year to get all the evidence down to Nate, like pin him to the crime. I don't really know. He's so bad, Angel. You suck at your job. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Still, I don't think I, I was even more alive than I. I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Gravy. Poor old Jake Marshall, though he must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her? Lana Sky. My sister? What did they date? I bet so. The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. If you must know, it's never outright stated, but it's implied that they dated. Okay, that's what I thought. Of course, they were they were led by that legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. Do, do, do. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we're so shocked over how it turned out. You mean, with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear, while other items were kept secret. But you didn't have proof against any... You didn't have any... You didn't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us, save Goodman, were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Skye transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Skye was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. Well, yeah, I agree. She was being used? Uh. Damon Gant and Lana Skye... Two years ago, Gant was chief detective and Lana second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that, I mean his ability to attract evidence. He'd produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh, yes. There were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him, though. It's like Von Karma! <laughs> I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh, yes. Myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked. Or crooked. Crooked? Crooked. No. Crooked? I no, think crooked. so always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. It wasn't If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have ever recovered from the shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Starr. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Ooh. 
Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief... That's right. Having solved the SL9 case, his position as Chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control, and then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But how could he control Lana? I don't know. One thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her to change. At last. I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, Rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to craft create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. Oh, I still love her rice ball, beret. Me too, I want it. Also, I completely forgot we didn't do the most important thing in here. Oh, what's that? His paper. Oh, yeah. I you wonder what paper. he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? I drove a sitting right there! Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth. Is that the type of gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground! <laughs> Hold on. First, let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. She didn't even look. <laughs> <laughs> what? Letter of re 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 resignation, I'm guessing. If you can't read, I'll read it for you. It says letter of resignation. Yeah. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean. I'm tired, Mr. Wright. I feel as if something inside me has died. I mean, your father did, so that might... I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, none of this is your fault! I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation. I wonder if I can use it for anything. Put I'm letter of resignation in your pocket. If, if he resigned, mm -hmm. and Edgeworth obviously is young enough, he still needs a job, what would Edgeworth's next job be? He could work with Old Bag. Old Bag? No. <laughs> No way, he would not be good at security. I mean, he could be good at Welcome security. Welcome to McDonald's, may I take your, your order? order. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, that was more like, yeah, what would be, like, his next uh, job? Hmm. Is, like, Edgeworth, like, oh, I always had a passion for painting. <laughs> and then goes for something, like, random. Uh -huh. I feel like he'd like, do something serious. I feel like he could be, like, an accountant or something. Oh, he could totally be an accountant. I don't know if oh, he's good with math, but all right. This is Edgeworth. February 24th. He could be a professional Police chess Department. player. Criminal affairs. Uh, okay, maybe. He's good at chess, apparently. Oh, you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. I was very confused until he said I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer's still no. I'm not letting you in the chief's office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. Oh, I wonder, does Edgeworth have a card that could get into the, the he's office? Not an, uh, he's not a detective, so no. <laughs> there has, there's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Steak. <laughs> we don't have steak! <laughs> Oh. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? No way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they've pushed him this far. Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. First I thought he was as cold as ice. But now I know different. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... We betrayed him. Detective. That's it. I've made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. We can't do that. If someone found out... They wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. 
Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake! Yeah! Alright, Detective. Thank you. Gumshoe's ID is tucked walk, swiftly into your pocket. We just, we just walk pocket. in and Kant has a gun. He's like, bye-bye. <laughs> a police department ID card allows you to access the... Oh, we gotta exam... I don't think I've ever examined this. This is gonna be great. Detective Gumshoe isn't very photogenic, is he? Whatever you do, just don't say that to his face. Right there! <laughs> <laughs> Look, his eyes are half shut. Yeah, and his mouth is half open. Hey, each of his shirt buttons is off a notch. And he's got the narrow end of his tie in the front. I think this goes beyond being a photogenic issue. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, oh poor guy! Let's look at the back. Let me share a little advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue, keep your trap shut. I'll, uh, keep that in mind. Sheesh! Alright. Back to the chief's office, I guess. We're gonna die. <laughs> you think he's got a gun and he's just gonna kill no, us? No, no, we're gonna walk in, he's gonna be, like, doing the Ganondorf, like, playing the <laughs> da, organ. Da, 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 da. And then he's gonna be like, oh, hello, I knew you were going to break in here. <laughs> February 24th, Police Department Chief's Office. Here goes, Mr. Wright. Now, nobody play the pipe organ. Open sesame. If anyone finds us now... Detective Gumshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were a ghost! I didn't even know you could slap a ghost! Ah! Detective Gumshoe! What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? I, I wasn't sneaking! I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came too. If you're here- But what's the point of giving us your ID card?! <laughs> Crumpled Detective Gumshoe's ID card in your pocket. Hey! Don't do that to my card! <laughs> Every, the guy's just like, what's that noise in my office? He's in another building. Oh, that's true. I hardly ever get a chance to come in here. So I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. No, don't say it. <laughs> I'm dancing at least. Um, you really want, you really do want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now come on, let's see what we can find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. All right. The chief's office. That desk on the other side of the room was that your sister's? Yes. That's where, oh, that's where I was waiting for Lana, on that day, two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. Well, that's that, good, That's I guess. a strange reason to leave it there. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. Oh my gosh. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated How? at the time. Oh my gosh, I was gonna say, imagine the police department New Year's party. With so many stories. So many stories. The dude's just sobbing over his novel that he wrote. Another guy's sobbing over his game. Intoxicated Gant's like, you know what, guys? I always keep all the evidence in my room. I see. <laughs> so, ever since Lana left, no one ever touches that desk? No one except Chief Gant, and the cleaning lady who's in here each morning. <laughs> we should look at the ch cleaning lady, then. Still, two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. Catch you, Isabel. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think... Nah. You wouldn't be... No. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now then, let's take a look around a bit more. Hey, hold on! Not so fast, buddy! Huh? What is it? When someone tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you, pal! You don't just let it go like that. Sorry. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think... Chief Gant... Might be a suspect, do you? Um, I already said that, so yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, Mr. 
Ryan, what do we think of him? I I don't think highly Chief of him. Chief Gant. So it's finally come to this. <laughs> what do I think of him? I think he's creepy. Perhaps, I think he stares too much. Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings. Yet. There he goes, ignoring me again. Alright. Oh. Oh, one thing that we should definitely do. Oh, there's just gonna be blood everywhere. <laughs> he everywhere. just coated his office in blood. <laughs> everywhere. Oh, yes, well, I had a barbecue in here once, so we had a lot of raw meat delivered. And then one exploded. <laughs> well, nothing over there. <laughs> Why is there luminol in my org? <laughs> <laughs> All over the paint? No. Oh, well, yeah. that's a lot of blood. Well, that makes sense. That's where the murder happened. Whoa! This area must have been covered in blood! Is this from that incident? It must be. When Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, two years have passed, so the reaction's kinda dull. So a murder really did take place here. Of course it did. Let's look at it. Let's look at this statue. This is C-3PO. I mean, it's the real deal, isn't it? The armor and these weapons? Sure is, pal. The Chief doesn't care for lim imitations. First the pipe organ, now this armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? What? You mean we're paying for this? That's it! I'm not paying one cent of my taxes! You don't have any taxes to pay. Shh! Be careful what you say! Who knows? The chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak! That would be ridiculous. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out! You guys don't know how scary that guy can be! I do. <laughs> Marty gets really creeped out by him for some reason. Um, that's not what I want. No audacity, that's bad. Alright, anyway. I get creeped out by him because he stares too much and he's intimidating. So it's okay to stare a little, but not too much. <laughs> no, it, it, it's like an uncomfortable amount. This was taken on that day two years ago. The day Joe Dark ran out of the questioning room and tried to kill Emma. After receiving his reward trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here, then went along with Chief Gant to question Dark. I bet he never knew he'd be dead enough just a few hours later. That's sad. Gee, you think? He's, He's like, like, I'm no, going to die! <laughs> <laughs> this was Lana's desk. It sure is tidy. Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it! Looks like someone's still keeping it clean. That's the cleaning lady. Does Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Gant must still keep it in clean in memory of their partnership. They were the stuff legends are made of! Does he keep it in memory for her, or in memory of the crime? Second, I'm guessing. These shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecutor's office. There's a small picture frame on the left shelf. Hey! This is when Lana and I went to that theme park. They went to Disney World! What? Oh, that's Or did cute. they go to Universal? Uh, they went to just Disneyland, Japan, and Thornia of the edition. So either Disneyland or Disney Sea. Or Disney Tokyo. Disney. San Fran Tokyo. Sea Land. Sea World. <laughs> sea World. <laughs> sea <laughs> Land. <laughs> I love Sea Land. <laughs> sea Land. You know, they should part. make an Earth themed version called Land Land. Land Land. I'd go to Land Land. <laughs> Look at this giant window. Makes you want to crash through it and jump outside! Uh, this is the 15th floor! <laughs> I know! I was just saying! Saying what?! <laughs> Ever since making Detective, I've always dreamed about doing something like that. Note to self! Detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams! So long as he doesn't go crashing through that window when he gets fired. Don't say that! Yeah, that's not good. I think there's... Mm, there's an the organ here. The organ! The Chief's organ sure is a sight to behold. Occasionally we hear him playing it from the Criminal Affairs Department. That's on the second floor! This is the 15th! <laughs> <laughs> when a detective shows up, the Chief calls him to his office. Oh, when, when a detective screws up, the Chief calls him to his office and makes him listen to the organ for hours. What's so bad about that? Music soothes the soul. After that, the detective can't hear anything for days except for the ringing in his ears. So it's an instrument of punishment. Literally. 
But aren't the chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone anyway. That's beside the point. He probably wears earplugs. Ooh, Chief's private, really old-timey phone. Wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk! Speaking of that, when we were here earlier... Oh, it's you two! Chief Gant! He put that paper he was reading in his desk. He was just reading the paper, man. <laughs> Could be like I wonder what he was reading. He was probably just doing the crossword puzzle. Oh, man. I'm um, taxpayer <laughs> dollars! <laughs> this looks like a list of evidence used in a case. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this. Hey, look at the case name! Huh? SL9 incident? I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what... No, about evidence lists. Normally, they're twice as long. That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. A half-sized list of evidence. That list of evidence, it seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. So it's probably a list of all the things they took off. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it! The chief must be hiding something about that case! It would appear so. Evidence He's list like, what added are you to doing the court in my record. room? Dun, dun, dun. No clues here. I beg Let's to differ. Let's look at his microwave! <laughs> this is a safe, oh, isn't never it? mind. That's not a microwave! <laughs> Chief Gans burrito still in it! <laughs> <laughs> Come, she takes it. He goes to Taco Bell. <laughs> Safe? That word is ripe with intrigue. Uh, okay, if you say so. Looks like a code needs to be entered for the panel to open it. I bet it's the... Oh my gosh, I just saw a reference. KB. That, that'll that come and play uh, in a future Kobe? game. No, KB. Oh, KB. And that's like the logo, I guess. King Seven digit of... number. I think King I of might... Bambinas. King of Bambinas. That's definitely it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I'm not sure what will happen if we enter the wrong code. I'd better beep, wait until I beep, find something beep, more definite. Beep. They kick you out. Muggle <laughs> alert. Muggle alert. <laughs> <laughs> no, or it could be like in... You know how like in uh, Wind Waker, if they find you under the barrel, they'll throw you in jail? Uh, really? Yeah, the mob ones with the perfect orthodoxy. Yeah, and then they like set your barrel on fire. It's like... I'm sure, I'm sure Gantt happen. would set our barrel on fire. Yeah. Seven-digit number. Didn't we see one of those somewhere? How about we try entering my birthday? No. <laughs> yes. That's definitely, definitely that's Gantt's password. <laughs> yeah, K KB is going to come into play in a future game. Okay, let's input. input. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know! You want to try my birthday? It's... I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. But I want to know Gumshoe's birthday. What's your, uh, idea? Seven, 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 seven. No. <laughs> Let's try that. <laughs> Code input error. Well. I guess that wasn't it. I was so sure that was the number. Maybe we should check the court record again. A seven digit number. Seven 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 seven. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right, we can try that next. <laughs> I do want to know what Gumshoe's birthday is now that I think about it, but it makes it sound like they're taking a bunch of photos. All right. That would be really stupid of him if he had all the same number. <laughs> We're good. Code That's confirmed. What I Access thought. granted. Because he's the lucky seven. What's open? Bingo. What number did you enter? Whose birthday was that, pal? Seven 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 seven. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. I knew it. You mean? Seven 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 seven. That ID number? I think you're one seven shy this time. This can only mean one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Yeah, we're not gonna probably. be able to. We're gonna like tap on it. And it's gonna be like you're going to jail. <laughs> uh uh uh. You didn't say the magic <laughs> word. How much money is there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's a. 
a, a... A shard from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar. It's Where have I face. seen this before? There's something else in here, too. What's this? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. With blood marks on it. Oh, maybe not. No, it's just brown. This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey! I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once! You think the chief made up the design? Uh, I don't think so. Oh. Well, it was just a thought. Is that it? That's all that was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it. And a broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. But unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here! Great. Now I have okay, to how? prove their relevancy to get them. How often do you think Dan really <laughs> checks his safe? Every day, he kisses the shard. <laughs> uh, How are these two items related to the SL9 incident? Come on, there's got to be something we can show the detective. Well, right. one well of let's, them, let's start with the easy one, shall we? The easy one with the vase. Some people pronounce it Voss. Vosquez. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, could you have another look at this jar? All of us put that back together. Oh, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. It happened yesterday. <laughs> Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right! One of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found. You mean this one? That was in the safe? Yeah, that one. That was in the safe. Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells! Let's see if it fits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do this right now. What? Look, bud, you don't get someone all worked up, then just leave them hanging. You're as bad as that girl I met back when I was 16. <laughs> Aw. 16? That's the same age I am. I wonder what happened. It's hard to imagine Detective Gumshoe had a childhood. <laughs> or a girlfriend. Well, if well we he don't... didn't have a girlfriend, that's the problem. Oh. <laughs> well, if we don't do it now, then at least do it later. <laughs> when I was 17, it was a very good year. It was a very good year for a small town. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so, <laughs> here, let me have, see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. Well, it's just one piece now, so that should be easy. There's blood! There's blood. There! It fits like a charm. That, of course, means Chief Gant willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But... Hey, guys! Get a load of this! <laughs> what is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. There's a weird smiley face, and... What's that sign in math? I can't think of it. Root? Square root? Square root. Square root, and a few dots. There's a reddish line on it! A reddish line? That's blood. I don't get it! Why would Chief Gant hide this in his safe? The unstable jar data has been updated. Dun, dun, dun. Now for the handprint. Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is! So you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. Alright, go to town. Sheesh! What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints! Um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about that cloth we found in the safe. Oh, <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? Sure. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkle the powder on the cloth. Then, once it's been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I don't have, have to be told a million times. Alright, let's get this over with. Which one should we do? Which thumb. finger? The thumb? 
All right. Oh, I'm, this is way more fun to do on the actual touch screen. I'm sure. And then more fun to blow, actually. All right. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Hmm. I gave it my best shot. That kind of result won't be good for matching prints, will it? But it doesn't look like we'll get a clear result from this print. Okay, let's try a different finger, then. All right. What's a good backup finger? Middle finger? <laughs> One banana, two banana, three banana, four. <laughs> wow. That's the never banana squid I... show. I was about to say, I never thought I heard I it never that. ever watched it, and it looked terrible. Yeah. But I heard terrible. the theme song on Boomerang quite a bit. All right. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. Whose fingerprint do you think it is? Uh, no. 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 Nope. Yes. Yes. Wait, see any others? That's Emma's. No. How can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints were they? Huh? Oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Psst! Hey you! Over here! What's going on here? What are that kid's prints doing inside the Chief's safe? Don't ask me! Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. Bad idea. Here, maybe you should hold on to this. Strip of cloth folded and added to the court record. Well, was I any help? Of course! Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Now that's not very kind, I knew is it. it! See? He's gonna, like, electric shock us! In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you in the coat? Yeet! Chief Gant! You didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run right into a pole. Just then I thought of a certain detective. Wow. Do you mean me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, you in the coat. Me, sir? Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. I figured as much. But sir... Now get out! Yup. Yes sir! I knew this guy was trouble. We'll be on our way too then. Wait, you, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. Me sir? I'd like a word with you. But sir... I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair, you're free to go. Mr. Wright! Are you gonna leave her? No. He is, unfortunately. <laughs> Look, pal, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. She's gonna be, de be dead. She's gonna be murdered in cold blood. And he'll well, then we up. can testify. <laughs> he'll, he, but he'll cover and up. And Gumshoe can. But no, you and just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it! Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. It's hard to believe anyone could keep quiet about it all this time. Anyway, you listening to me? I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the Chief again. Later, pal! Oh, yeah, that's gonna go great, Thanks. Gumshoe. He's a cute can I roll 50 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, sure. Sure. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police want to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. February oh. 24th, detention center, visitor's room. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. 
I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I finally figured it out. Who it is you're hiding behind those words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you've convinced- once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. I have to admit, I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it. I knew she would. Yet have. there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say? So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, who may I ask is this person you're speaking of? The one I'm supposedly so frightened of. What is this person's name? Your person's name is Meekins! <laughs> I was gonna say Meekins. The person whom you fear is this! To be honest, there's someone a bit scarier. Who would that be? Why, you, of course. Me? Yes. You seriously believe what you're saying, don't you? Now that's scary. I, uh... You seem to have the makings of a criminal in you. What with all your fallacious... Fallacious... <laughs> fallacious accusations. Care to spend tonight in the next cell? If you ask me, you're the scary one. Well, Miss Skye? Mr. Wright, you are addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about the circumstances? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly investigated the evidence that was... Me. I had access because I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other, Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in this case. It's my attorney's badge! No, Ari! <laughs> you want proof of the Chief's volunteerings? Here it is! He pushed me out and his fingerprint is on the attorney's badge! Wow. That evidence proves someone is doing something wrong, alright? But it's not the Chief. Wh who would it be? Why, you, of course. Me? Yes. You seriously believe what you're saying, don't you? Now that's <laughs> right. scary. Fine. <laughs> we'll present the jar. <laughs> I just found this in a safe in the Chief's office. This jar piece, and this strip of cloth. I'm glad you got those out. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I just realized... We what? left the safe open. <laughs> He's gonna be like, no! And like, running around. <laughs> Whoops! Oh well. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Touché, Mr. Wright. It's as you submissed. Submissed. Surmised. Surmised. I can't talk, apparently. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. 
in the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that is more accurate than cooperate. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. Well, that's a weird request, but okay. Just as I suspected. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone <laughs> believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. The trunk was broken. I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Edgeworth's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident. Serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edgeworth's knife? That's right. That's why she's like, Oh, I saw the murder! Yep. Oh! Okay, that makes more sense. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. And this is the reason for the bandage on your right hand? Yes. It seems I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. Miss Star. That makes sense, though, because she's like, Oh, I gotta cover up this knife, I gotta yep. do this thing. Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want to be... I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that. By whatever means possible. So, you hid Dark's knife? The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it. In Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right. Then I called my sister to tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so confident about Iwana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least I thought I could trust him at that time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escape... Escapade. Escapade on his, of his own. Oh, you mean... Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Officer Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He'd already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. So basically it's like, we know everything, we just gotta prove it! Kind of. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room? I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana... You've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murderer? What went down in the chief's office two years ago? Yeah, that's the only thing we don't know is what went down there. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be almost all of the trial tomorrow. Oh, man. Okay, well, we probably could have done this in free videos, but that was too good to take a break in the Agreed. middle of. Yeah, you all probably got into it, I hope. <laughs> I hope so, because you got an hour and ten minutes of it. So, yeah, 
I think you're guess finally starting to see why this is my favorite case in the first yeah. game. This is. I'm just glad I was semi right. Yeah, you were. Hey. Well, we still don't know for sure. We don't know for sure if Gant killed him, but okay, if but, you get a call from your boss and he's like, "Hey, can you just spoke to this guy?" We don't. We don't know it was Gant who called her though, but we kind of do. We kind of <laughs> do. Anyhow, tune in next time. We're going to court for the final time. And who knows what's going to happen there. A lot of crazy stuff's going to happen. And I'm, I'm so pumped for the final showdown already. It's pretty epic. Me Tune too. in next time. Until we meet again, have a great day and God bless.